Hey YouTube, it's DCG Tacos here. Basically got the starter uh, that came in, the Moctis vs. Sorted. We're gonna talk a bit about the two. Really, we just got five cards each in each one. There's a lot of reprints in the other ones. Nothing too relevant, we'll talk about those two. Uh, so we'll start with the, the Noctis first. Uh, so you got five new cards here. All right, so the Noctis uh, lets you search out any of the retainers and then whenever a wind forward uh, or earth forward comes into play uh, you choose a forward your opponent controls the forward that came into play deals damage equal to its power to the other forward uh, you can only do the effect once per turn it's also an ex effect which it's a little under costed I'd say like in the sense that it's 7k power so uh, you can easily amaterasu this and get value out of it being able to search out and do that it seems pretty good the Ignis will basically make them all untargetable by abilities that your opponent controls. And then this also has an effect where if Noctis or Ignis swing, uh, it'll activate all characters uh, you control. Now, it doesn't really do anything for you on entry. The value is, I suppose, activating the characters. So that's where the value is on the Ignis. Prompto gets us the pump uh, while Noctis is on the board. It goes up by 3k, has haste. And then whenever it swings, you need to have these two present uh, in order to draw two. Then on damage three, this is able to search out any of these three cards and add it to your hand. Uh, the Gladiolus uh, gets a CP reduction as long as you control a Noctis. That goes down to two CP for 9k, which is pretty good. Uh, but it's really just a beat stick at this point. It basically does an additional 2k damage whenever this deals damage. And then the Gladiolus will get 1k and brave on damage 3. So damage 3 is relevant for these two. The titan, I think this may see a lot of play uh, as removal. I know people have been using Cactor, this may be a little better. So when you cast this, in addition to it, you need to remove a forward, or you may remove a forward, right? Uh, you choose a forward your opponent controls, it deals damage equal to the power of the forward that you chose. I wish it was worded a little different, like I wish instead of dealing damage, it read if it was like the power is equal to or less than the, the four that you chose, it would break it instead uh, because, you know, there's ways to reduce the damage. But regardless, I think that the card is fine. This will replace Cactor, I believe so, as like premium removal. This is going to see a lot of play. Also, there's some synergy with the, the X-Death, the one that like removes forwards from play. So yeah, there's that, just thinking about that. As far as the reprints go, nothing too exciting. Uh, you got Thieves, Chocobos to give him haste, another Chocobo, Sulky, Sif to activate, you got the other Gladiolus. Uh, these are also retainers, so there's some synergy. The Ignis, Noctis, Core, uh, this is like kind of filler, honestly. Uh, this searches out the FF15, this searches out the Regis, and Cindy, which is pretty good in this deck. Uh, Sophia, and then Iris, right? Uh, this helps with color fixing, and then this was seeing play beforehand. And then we've got the Arden deck. I'm gonna find new cards there. So with Arden, his stats are good for the CP. Uh, he's 4 CP, 9k, has Brave. When a forward is put from the field to the break zone, it doesn't have to be your own during this turn. The cost required to cast uh, your next forward is reduced by 5. It can't be reduced to 0. Uh, the effect will only happen once per turn. And then it has a special, one of each color, tap itself copy of itself, choose a forward, it loses all abilities, and then break it. So this is very similar to Waka, there's a little more than that, uh, but still it's a good special ability, right? This is going to combo with a lot of things, uh, I'm really interested to see how people make this work, but I do think this is going to see a lot of play. Ravis basically comes into play, you remove two job captains in your break zone from the game, or if you do uh, you choose a forward, deal it 10k, and then it goes up by 1k on damage 3, right? So 9k uh, just gets it out of the Amaterasu range, and doing 10k to something is no laughing matter. That's, that's really good removal, right? And all it does is ca cost you like 2 captains. Uh, and you got Idolis, uh, and it comes into play. You choose a fire forward, 4 or less in your break zone, put it into play. And then you can sack itself, does similar to plays, you choose a forward. Uh, and deal it 7,000. Uh, it could be your own, it could be your opponent's, uh, whatever, if it's relevant. The other thing may come up. So this frees it open, then you're able to play another one again, which is quite good, right? So this is actually, this will combo pretty well with the Arden. Uh, it is a 6 cost, so if you do get its effect to 
trigger, it'll reduce all the way down to 1. So even if you look at it like 6, uh, 6 CP or 1 CP, it's a 9k body, has haste and first strike, uh, has an EX burst, uh, you basically break a forward 3 or less, your opponent controls, and on a damage 5, you choose cost 5 or less and break it. Honestly, that's really good. Uh, it's a Dragoon, so you could play this in Dragoons. This may see play even outside of Dragoons. I uh, expect to see this a lot. And then you get the Cloud God uh, in conjunction with the Ravis. Uh, this lets you search out other captains. They have to be two different names, right? And then you can tap it and sack itself. Choose two forwards your opponent controls and dull it. So I'll trigger the, the Arden. And then as far as the rest of the deck goes, uh, you got Warriors, Black Mage, got Liltis. It's okay removal. Let's see some play. The Klaukas, more captains, also more captains, kind of Kamui. This I'm kind of like iffy about. Then you got the Ukes, Dragoon, so once we get back to Irenea, you get Selkies. So as usual, I mean, like I like to set, like give a lot of a lot of filler, I suppose, right? I'd say the deck's really good. Like the art on this is fantastic, right? If I had to choose though. I straight out of the box, I'd probably play this one. It just seems a little more easier to pilot. Uh, this is very reliant on getting the names out on the board, and you know, doing this so consistently right out of the box is going to be difficult. As far as building afterwards, I'm interested to see how like how to get this work. But for now, I think this is the way to go. There just seems to be like a lot more going for this. This is an interesting mechanic. So uh, I'm interested to see like what what your opinions are, like what you would think. Which one? Which one's your favorite? I do have like a little nitpick, but I mean, like, an, like it's a little nitpick. Last set they gave us non-foil, full art, Brynhildr and Odin. This one didn't give us an extra full art, uh, so I kind of wish like they were a little more consistent. But again, it's just a little nitpick. Uh, I think the product is really good. I picked this up for twenty dollars. Uh, that might be good with the going price right now, so it's a lot better than the last product. So I guess. I guess in that sense it's okay for them to like not give us a full art non-foil because I think when we were trying to pick up the other product it was like $28 and I just avoided the product altogether for the uh, Def F4 deck and it just didn't seem really good. But yeah, yeah, let me know in the comments below like what you're looking forward to making. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.